Hi Steel Friends, today I want to talk to you about high strength bolt installation. Uh, so we talked about our connections and we said that uh, we were designing bearing type connections. So in a bearing type connection, I'll uh, give you an example here, I have a 3 quarter inch bolt through a standard size hole and I have this uh, long slotted hole here. Uh, in a bearing type connection, uh, we're relying upon the bolt to transmit the force. So you can see as long as the bolts between the two plate elements, when I try to pull on them, the connection doesn't slide anywhere. Uh, and so no matter how tight I tension this bolt, you know, it doesn't matter even if it's not fully tightened, the connection is still together and it's passing the force from one to the other. That's what we mean by a bearing type connection because this angle member is bearing on the bolt which the bolt is then transmitting the force to this other, uh, the angle member on the right. All right, so that is what's meant by a bearing type connection. Now, we want to talk about a slip critical connection. So in a slip critical connection, rather than putting our bolt in the, at the end here, I want to say what happens if we put the bolt in the middle? Well, if it's not tightened, then it'll slide. So that's what's meant by slip. Uh, so in a slip critical connection, we don't want that slip to occur. So the way that we're going to prevent that from happening is by tightening this bolt. So you have to think that as we tighten the bolt, the bolt is being put into tension. And as you keep twisting the nut, that bolt continues to build up tension, which is basically clamping these two plates together. That'll give us some sort of friction force between the two elements so that when we have them apart, and we try to pull on them, slide doesn't occur. So in a slip critical connection, you prevent, basically you transmit the force from one member to the other uh, using just the friction force uh, between the two plates that's developed by tensioning this bolt. Let's take a look at the notes for this lesson. So our learning objective is to calculate the design strength of a slip critical connection. So we've just learned the difference between a bearing type and a slip critical connection. So I have some figures here to help you visualize the force transfer in both types of connections. So we see in the bearing type connection, the force is transmitted between the plates by bearing of the plate against the bolt. And then that bolt transmits the force from one plate to the other. Now in a slip critical connection, that's not the case. We are tensioning that bolt. And as we tension that bolt, we develop a normal force in the bolt. That normal force becomes the clamping force, and then we can calculate a friction force uh, just by physics. Uh, friction equals mu times n, where mu is the coefficient of friction. So if we're going to design a slip critical connection, we need to know what that normal force in the bolt is. So AISC has given us table J3.1 that lists the minimum bolt pretension for different diameters of bolts and then the different groups of bolts. So you can see here, for instance, the 3 quarter inch diameter bolt that was in our video, that was an A325 bolt. That has to have a minimum pretension of 28 kips. All right, that's great to know. That'll help us design our slip critical connection. But how do we guarantee that we achieve this minimum bolt pretension when we're installing these bolts in the field? So on our next page of notes, I have four different methods of installation for these bolts. Uh, that are currently recognized by AISC. Uh, so you can read through them, but I'd rather uh, talk you through them uh, with a little bit of a demonstration. All right, so how do we guarantee that we have the minimum pretension in these bolts? Well, if we just use a regular hardened washer and a nut, uh, the first method is what we call the turn of the nut method. Um, so in that method, you tighten this nut down as uh, in the definition says, as tight as a regular iron worker can get it. So uh, hopefully that's pretty tight uh, with a wrench. So uh, we get this pretty tight and then beyond that we want to continue to tighten it. So what we'll do is we would mark both the nut and the plate with a marker or any sort of marking device. And uh, you would then say, okay, from here I need to turn it so many turns. Do I need to go a third of a turn or a half a turn or uh, two thirds of a turn? Um, and the AISC specification has 
this information for you uh, in the turn of the nut method. Uh, in the manual, we can see how many turns we need to develop the force in a particular, you know, for in this case, a three quarter inch uh, bolt. So that would uh, be the first method, that's the turn of the nut method. Uh, the second method is calibrated wrench tightening. Um, so what we would do is we would set up uh, what uh, is often used is called a skid mower. It's basically a device that you put these bolts in and you can measure the tension in the bolts. So we would set that up. We would have our uh, air pressure, you know, our pressurized, like when we tighten these things, we're going to use a pneumatic wrench. And so we would then calibrate the air pressure to a certain amount so that when we exhaust, when we get to that upper limit of the air pressure, we know that we have the tension in the bolt. And so we would have to first calibrate our machine with our skid more, maybe at the beginning of our day, maybe every couple hours. Um, but then we would know that as we're going around the structure with that same pneumatic wrench, we know that we would be developing the required pretension in, in the bolt. The next method is uh, the twist-off style bolts. So these bolts have a specially designed end and a specially designed wrench so that as you're twisting this nut and it's getting tighter and tighter and you're building that pretension, eventually this stem piece will twist off. So you can see that stem piece would kind of twist off. I have an example here uh, in this particular bolt where you see it reaches a critical amount and this would shear off and then as long as you see that it's sheared off, you know that you've met the required minimum pretension. Finally, we have what are called direct tension indicators. So these are specially designed washers that have these little ridges in them. So you can see these little ridges here. And what happens is as we're twisting the nut onto those ridges, those ridges will collapse. Uh, there's two types of direct tension indicators. One would be something like this. Uh, where there's you know just the ridges and it's hollow in the back and what happens is as you tighten that So say that's what we have in place here as you tighten that you then check with a, what's known as a feeler gauge uh, It's a very thin metal piece So this one's 0 0.005 inches and you would then check to see if this feeler gauge would fit between the nut and the washer um, If that's the case then you uh, know that you don't have it tight enough yet and you have to get it to be blocked so many times around. It depends on the diameter of the bolt. It depends on uh, how the washer is arranged, where you put the feeler gauge as well. Uh, and that's all uh, the manufacturer would kind of give you those specifications. Uh, there's another type called uh, squirter washers. Uh, so they're the same, but they have a little bit of latex paint tucked into that little cavity on the backside. And then they have these little grooves for that paint to kind of escape out. So what you would do is you would keep tightening this and then gradually as those dimples deflect, the paint would squirt out the sides. And then again, you have to have like paint on like three or four out of the five slots uh, to make sure that you have a tight enough connection. Um, so these uh, are kind of useful as well. Uh, inspectors like these because the, it gives you a, an ability to look at the connection and see if it's actually tightened to the specifications. So that's how we design slip critical connections. Uh, my recommendation is that you always design for bearing two uh, because in the case, uh, if you don't actually get that full development of the high strength and the member slides, you want to make sure you don't suddenly run into a case where you're having a bearing failure, uh, ripping out, uh, tear out strength, bearing strength, all those things. Uh, however, uh, so a lot of times it, uh, in bracing and uh, some other members, we rely on the slip ability of those braces because if you have an oversized hole or a slotted hole, sometimes it's easier for construction, but we do want to prevent slip and so we want to make sure those things are tightened down. And now you know a few methods of how they're done and I look forward to uh, telling you more about them if you have any questions. So let's take a look at how we calculate the strength of a slip critical connection. So this is uh, from AIC chapter J 3.8. So you can go through, um, basically it tells you the strength per bolt is equal to mu times d sub u times hf times tb times ns. So then we just have to go through and learn what each of those variables mean. 
Um, fee for this case is one uh, for standard size and short slotted holes perpendicular in the direction of load. So this tends to be a serviceability type limit state. So that's why fee is one uh, for oversize and then slotted holes in the direction of the loading. That's much more critical. So we need to uh, use a lower fee uh, to have more safety. So what are some of the variables? D sub U is a 1.13 and basically it's based off of studies of how tight bolts actually are. So when you look at that table for the minimum pretension, on average, bolts tend to have 13% higher than that minimum pretension. And that just comes from experiments. So that's why we use the 1.13. TB is the minimum fastener pretension that is given in table J3.1, uh, and then it gets amplified up by that 1.13 value. Next, we have the variable HF, which is a factor for filler plates. Um, filler plates just help when you have connections that are offset from one another and they're not at the same uh, because of different thickness plates maybe. You have to put a little filler plate in so that the thicknesses match up. Um, and so the explanation is there. Uh, one filler plate, HF is one. If you have two or more fillers, then you have to use HF equal to 0.85. NS is the number of slip planes, so we talked about this when we looked at bearing connections. And finally, mu is the mean slip coefficient, and that's based off of class A or class B surfaces. Uh, class A surfaces are what's typical, uh, or is our conservative estimate. This is just unpainted, clean, mill-scale steel, so this is how most everything gets constructed in the field. Uh, for class B, special preparation has to be done. You can get a little bit higher friction coefficient, but you, you then have to make sure you do that special preparation. As I recommend, the engineer should always make sure the bearing strength and the tear-out strength and the bolt shear strength exceed the slip strength in case the connection slips. Well, I enjoyed teaching you about slip critical connections and I'm happy to know that you have a formula now to do some calculations. Uh, I'd ask you to stick around with me, take a look at the next video when we look at solving an example for slip critical connection strength.